Hello and good morning to everyone on this third Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're also in the week of prayer for Christian unity, and I would invite everyone to come to our Christian unity service, which is going to be held this evening, Sunday evening, uh, January 22nd, tonight, 7 o'clock, in Christ Anglican Church here in Stellarton. So we welcome everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who truly makes us one. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, our light and our salvation, Jesus announced the nearness of your kingdom and called his disciples to be fishers of men and women. Give us courage to follow in the way of Jesus, that our lives may bear witness to the good news of the kingdom at hand, and our vocation serve to draw people to your salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew in the third chapter where four fishermen are called as Jesus' disciples. Hear the word of the Lord. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, illumine our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are proclaimed, our eyes may see your kingdom, our ears may hear the call of Christ, and our hearts may know the joy of your salvation. Amen. When Matthew writes of the call of the first disciples in his gospel, there is no suggestion whatsoever of any hesitation on the part of the four fishermen. The great New York preacher, William Sloan Coffin, has written, Certainly Peter and Andrew and James and John, in deciding to follow Jesus, received more to think about than had they stayed at home. And so it is with all of us. If we give our lives to Christ, if we leave familiar territory and take the leap of faith, what we receive in return fills our minds altogether as much as it fills our hearts. Now, Matthew doesn't tell us why they follow. His story is simple. Jesus calls them and they follow. There is no hint about where they're going. There's no detailing of what discipleship will involve. Nothing is promised. Nothing is signed. Matthew is clearly not interested in these questions. He is more concerned to show that the disciples are called by Jesus and how their discipleship requires the leaving of everything that occupied them up until that very moment. Obviously, things did not happen as abruptly as that. The disciples did not leave the security of their homes and jobs on the spur of the moment to follow a stranger they'd never seen before. 
In their accounts, Luke and John allow time for the disciples to find out about Jesus before they are called. The absence of any of this detail in Matthew points to the fact that he wants to focus on something more important, the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. With John the Baptist now in prison, the great voice of the wilderness is silenced. It is time for Jesus to begin. Matthew shows that Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. Jesus is the great light that has dawned. He is the one who begins his mission in Galilee of the Gentiles, a mission to all peoples. And Matthew keeps the focus on Jesus and shows the authority of his word and the power of his healing. Discipleship is centered on Jesus because of who he is. Others will change. Jesus alone is the source of discipleship, and without the person of Jesus, discipleship is meaningless. There is nothing anti-intellectual in the leap of faith, for faith is not believing without proof, but trusting without reservation. Again, Sloan Coffin has written, Faith is no substitute for thinking. On the contrary, it is what makes good thinking possible. It has what we might call a limbering effect on the mind. By taking us beyond familiar ground, faith ends up giving us that much more to think about. Like Matthew, the Apostle Paul is insistent on Jesus as the focus of Christian discipleship. Jesus is the great light, and no one, however exalted, can take his place. Paul confronts the dissension in the Christian community at Corinth because they're making lesser lights into the great light. The church is divided into factions in Corinth, not over doctrinal differences, but over personalities. Some, if you read uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians, the early chapters are following Apollos, who was an elegant and enthusiastic teacher who attracts the well-educated to Christianity. Some, mainly Jewish Christians, rally to the name of Peter, some stay loyal to the memory of Paul, preferring his passion and his bluntness. The division of the church is destructive, and Paul argues for unity under Christ. Christianity is Christ. It was Christ who died for the sins of others, and all Christians are baptized in his name. Paul wants the community at Corinth to be a Christian community, not just a collection of factions and not slaves to personality cults. No leader, however important, can attach disciples to himself or herself. As Paul says later, there is only one foundation of the Christian community. For the foundation, nobody can lay any other than the one which has already been laid, and that is Jesus Christ. It's a good thing to remember during this week of prayer for Christian unity, those words of the Apostle Paul, and Paul resists any attempt to make Christian discipleship a matter of following this or that Christian leader. For Paul, only one person gets the incense, and that person is Jesus himself. Religious leadership is about leading others to Christ. It cannot be reduced to smiles and styles. Religious authority 
does not lead others to itself, but to the Lord. It does not exalt in itself or point to itself, but it points to Christ. For Paul and Matthew, there's only one answer to that question. Who are you for? The Christian must answer, I am for Christ. Amen. May God bless to us this further meditation of his holy word, and to his name be given all glory and praise. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Each petition will end with the words, God of light, and the response will be, hear our prayer. O loving God, your light reveals the needs of our world, and your salvation offers hope to the lost. Therefore, we pray for our world and our community, for your holy church, that all the baptized may live in harmony with one another, and our pastors and teachers may be wise and gracious ministers of the gospel. God of light, hear our prayer. For the world and for all who suffer under the rod of oppression, break the yoke of violence and free all people from the burden of war and domestic strife. God of light, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations, that they may be just and faithful in their duty and serve the good of all creation. God of light, hear our prayer. For those who suffer disease of body and mind, that they may know the power of your healing grace. God of light, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who will die this day, that they may find eternal rest, and for those who care for the dying, that they may find peace and comfort. God of light, hear our prayer. Hear, O Lord, the cries of your people. Be gracious to us and answer us, for you are our salvation. Through Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, hear now, O God, our prayers spoken and silent through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom we are bold to pray saying our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ calls us to be fishers of women and men for the sake of his beloved kingdom. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. When I, the perfect child of God, whose faith was deep and love was broad, not doubtful, guilty, worn, nor flawed, I gladly followed Jesus. But I'm the child of what I've been, estranged by much I've done and seen, afraid to show the love I mean, and fit to follow. Yet God, who knows me first and last, who's seen my best, my worst, my past, has shown his love intense and vast by meeting me in Jesus. For Christ, who so killed at Calvary, by sins like mine and folk like me, has risen, forgiven, and set me free. Made to follow Jesus. 
Let's sprinkle water on my brow, as in this place I make my vow. To own and love my Saviour now, and give myself to Jesus. God grant me what I still require, that I in others might inspire. The hidden hope, the deep desire to love and follow. Jesus, God grant me what I still require, that I in others might inspire, the hidden hope, the deep desire to love and follow Jesus.